everybody we are ready to get started thank you so much for being early being the early birds for this webinar today we're going to talk about giving tuesday and year in fundraising and i'm excited about the live critique i always love when they do that um it's just a, a pleasure to watch you grow from seeing your live critique my name is aretha simons i'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. just want to go with a little housekeeping for those of you if this is your first time we are recording this and you will get the video along with the slides within 48 hours. If you need the closed caption, just tap on that CC button on Zoom. And if you have a question, please type it in the Q&A. There's gonna be a lot of people here. Maybe we'll be able to grab it from the chat, but we prefer the Q&A kind of help us keep us organized. So I'm gonna turn it over to our guests. We have two um, special guests from Cosbach, Rob Wu, he is the CEO and founder of Cosbach. I'm gonna turn it over to you and thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Aretha. Hi, my name is Rob, and I will be sharing my slides. So let me get that working. Okay, slides are up. Um, my name is Rob Wu, CEO of Cosbox. We also have here Jenna Notar Francesco. Um, she will be speaking in a bit. I just want to take you through a few things over here, and we're super excited just to talk about something that really applies to the last quarter of the year, which is Giving Tuesday and year-end fundraising. Uh, my name is Rob Wu. I am the CEO and co-founder of Cosbox. We're a digital fundraising platform for nonprofits. I started this company 14 years ago because I love nonprofits. I love nonprofits. I love digital. I love fundraising. So why not build a fundraising platform that can help a lot of small and medium-sized nonprofits increase their mission that they do? Uh, you also have on here Jenna Notar Francesco. And she's going to be taking us through just a few intro slides, as well as our session agenda. Hello, everyone. Um, as mentioned, my name is Jenna Noto Francesco. I'm the account executive at Cosvox, and I've been here almost well, like two and a half years now. Um, really enjoying my time helping nonprofits get up and running, um, answering a lot of their questions, and just seeing their campaigns thrive. Uh, for campaigns, for example, like Giving Tuesday and Year End. So I'm really happy to be speaking about how we can help optimize your year end campaigns. Um, so if you're new to Causevox, Causevox is a digital fundraising platform, and we are designed to help growing nonprofits thrive, as I had mentioned, especially during this time during Giving Tuesday and year end by just making your fundraising easy. We can house all of your strategies under one roof. That could be a donation form, uh, a fundraising site, or a peer-to-peer -peer site for your Giving Tuesday and year-end, um, and all of that can be done on mobile. So uh, directing people to one place for all of your CTAs is what we do best. Um, we also offer hands-on support in the form of one-on-one -on -one support with real live people. So if you, you know, email support uh, at causevox.com, uh, I will be helping to answer your questions. Um, so you get to talk to a live person uh, or another member of our support team. Um, and we're here to just uh, really help you succeed. And then also with our top rated fundraising education. Uh, you'll be able to browse on our website during in our learn section and find a series of robust guides and templates and webinars such as this one to help you really grow your nonprofit by giving you the best tips and best practices um, for today. Uh, so again, raise more with less time on Causevox, whereas typical fundraising software might be clunky or cl complex, uh, we will tidy up your fundraising and remove any barrier that might be in the way of your donor from processing a donation online or your fundraiser getting up and running to raise funds on your behalf for giving Tuesday campaigns, year-end fundraising, and all of your donation forms year-round event ticketing. Um, donation forms are optimized with today's best marketing technology including mobile wallets, which we've seen has doubled and even tripled donor conversion online for your one-time recurring gifts and pledges uh, through Pledge Now, Pay Later. We also allow you to automize your customizable donation receiving and um, allow you to cover the fees and everything's customizable. For hands-free peer-to-peer, this is really hot right now, especially during this time when you want to get people up and running for, again, Giving Tuesday year-end campaigns, any other DIY or fundraising. We help you do it in less time and completely hands-free, everything's self-service and mobile. 
Um, and so if you're interested, maybe you need a platform, maybe you just want to create a quick um, Giving Tuesday or year-end landing page for your organization, you can go to causevox.com slash schedule a demo, and you can book uh, one of our recorded pre-recorded demos, or you can even schedule a live demo with myself or a member of our team, and we can talk, uh, talk through ways that CauseVox can help you get more gifts this year. Thanks. So for, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. All right, go ahead. All right, I'll take it. Uh, thanks, Jenna, for the intro. Um, we, we love our partnership with TechSoup, where we're able to offer a discounted uh, rate to use our platform. So check that out on the TechSoup website. But without further ado, let's talk about um, Giving Tuesday and your end fundraising. So the agenda for today is uh, we'll go over some of the best practices around Giving Tuesday and your end campaigns um, over the thousands and thousands of organizations that we serve over the past few years. I will talk about some of the best practices when it comes to marketing and communications on, on how to help you stand out. And we'll have a few techniques on how you can increase gift size as well. Uh, to accelerate some of your fundraising, your long-term fundraising. Uh, that'll be the first 25 minutes. The second half, we'll have 20 minutes of a live critique, um, maybe a little bit longer, depending on how fast I can go through these best practices. And then the last part, we'll have an optional Q&A. So uh, any one-on-one -on -one questions that you have. So let's get started. Uh, giving Tuesday is a day of giving. Uh, this year happens on November 29th, on Tuesday, um, after Thanksgiving. And it's for all types of organizations. It started out as a small movement of just a few campaigns, a few organizations running. And over the course of the past few years, it's really grown to a really large scale. And last year, $2.7 billion was raised on causes participating in Giving Tuesday, which is just an astronomical amount. But just because there's a large amount doesn't mean it guarantees your success. So you have to really think about, well, how does Giving Tuesday fit into my year end or my Q4 fundraising plans? How does it really help my organization? Is there a gap that I have that I'm trying to fundraise for? Or am I trying to engage my supporters so that uh, they have something to participate in? So think about the different reasons why you should be doing Giving Tuesday or how you should be doing year end fundraising. My personal favorite is using Giving Tuesday to tie into a larger uh, story, a larger narrative of year end fundraising. So you can use that to kick it off um, to a huge start and then run it through year end uh, to engage your supporters as well as to drive donations towards your fundraising goals. 30% of donations happen in December. So there's a great tie in where you have $2.7 billion of Giving Tuesday being raised, all the way to the largest activity when it comes to fundraising throughout the year. When you combine the two, something really special happens. Now, something to think about when it comes to running your Giving Tuesday year-end campaign is that a lot of organizations are really stuck in this mindset of, hey, let me just um, uh, hope for the best. Let me just spray and pray. Uh, so what you really want to think about is when it comes to year-end fundraising Giving Tuesday, don't just assume success because you see that $2.7 billion, $2 billion figure. It does take a lot of work. It does take planning, coordination, a strong story, a strong product and website in order to really drive a lot of donations to your organization. Um, don't just rely on social. Uh, social media is great, but the reach of it may be diminished as other organizations are blasting things on social or applying a lot of ad budget and ad spend on Facebook or Twitter or TikTok, or whatever it is, in order to drive more awareness. And don't also do a general ask. So uh, you, typically speaking, if you're just fundraising for something general where, where folks don't really understand what you're trying to raise funds for, it becomes very transactional and it just falls flat. What you must do is set clear goals, focus on the why, and really just tell these inspiring stories to really drive people to pay attention to you in order to uh, evoke some type of an emotional response and some type of action. So make it community driven. So fundraising really looks like this on the left-hand side where the old way is just kind of the spray and pray mentality, this let me just throw it out there and hope for the best. And sometimes you'll succeed, sometimes you won't. So the better way how we see it is that with your Giving Tuesday campaign, with your fundraising campaign, really make it more personal. Rely on those personal stories, rely on your network of advocates and supporters and get them to really go out there and share your story or advocate for your cause or to do some peer-to-peer -peer fundraising in order to reach new audiences to drive more donations to your organization. 
So we'll kind of distill this down on how you can run Giving Tuesday and year-end fundraising into basically four different buckets. Uh, it's, a, it's a checklist. So use this as a way, if you're taking notes, write down these four things over here on the things you really need to do and think about as you prepare for your Giving Tuesday and year-end fundraising campaign. So we'll talk about specific goals and how you can write that so it resonates with your audience. We'll talk about how you can write your appeal. We'll talk about how two techniques on how you can do, uh, how you can increase your gift size and there's some tips on crafting your communications as well as your communications timeline and how you can launch a great fundraising website or landing page or donation page in order to convert the people who are really interested in your story to making a donation. All right. So first things first, uh, well, is number one, you want to set the specific goals and craft your appeal. All right. So specific sales, uh, generic fails. I kind of made that up. So basically what I try to, to, to tell you is that if when you're trying to fundraise as part of a campaign, whether it be Giving Tuesday or something else or year in fundraising, the more specific you make it, the more tangible you make it, that the donor can really understand, the more successful you'll be. People love to donate to something specific because they know that, hey, my $200, my 50 bucks, my $1,000 would equal some type of impact, some type of outcome. Uh, because folks are buying into some type of impact that you're promising them as part of your messaging, as part of your campaign. So here are some great example goals that we've seen in the past to, dem to demonstrate this. Uh, for example, goals typically are SMART, as an acronym, they're specific, they're measurable, attainable, they're realistic, and they're timely. So these are some example goals that really encompass that SMART goal. So for example, raise $24,000 to build a new classroom. So it has a dollar goal to do something. And what does that yield? It supports 30 new children, for example. Another example is the rally, what, how many supporters? 100 supporters to provide 100 families with care packages. So something really specific and really tangible so that you can craft a strong story against what you're trying to do. Uh, impact goals are really important like this because it demonstrates needs for your donors. Um, it drives urgency for them because then you can measure your fundraising progress against a specific goal or to measure your impact progress against a specific goal. Uh, but the most important thing in my opinion for this is that having strong specific goals helps you message uh, your fundraising appeal as well as your social media posts, just all of your communications so that your donors really understand why they should donate. Uh, from there, after you have a specific goal, uh, then you can write your compelling fundraising appeal. So typically how we see this on a given Tuesday campaign or year end is some type of story that fits into a campaign website um, that tells people how much you're trying to raise, uh, what your goal is, is basically your case for support really just digested and abbreviated into a digital format within a couple hundred words. So uh, think about this in terms of how you can do that. Um, and one of the things that's really interesting is that when we look at some of the metrics, social media users who donate, 56% of them said that a compelling story is what really motivated them to make a donation. So typically when I talk to nonprofits uh, running a campaign, the bulk of your time should really be spent on figuring out what is the best story that you can share with folks in order to tell people how you can solve some of the social problems out there. Um, a good story will put a face behind your, your cause. So typically speaking, focusing one story on a specific individual that you help or a specific win that your organization has done throughout the year would demonstrate more results than being generic and being broad. Uh, when it comes to your fundraising appeal, you wanna communicate what you're trying to accomplish uh, when it comes to your fundraising campaign and why it matters um, for donors to participate as well as how folks can clearly take an action. So it's kind of a three-step process of um, your goals, how people can participate, and then very lastly, what action you want them to take. You want them, you want that to be specific. So whether it's making a donation, sharing your story, or participating in your peer-to-peer -peer campaign, kind of whatever it is, you should be very clear on what the ask is that you want folks to do. So here's an example um, about an ask is uh, in 24 hours, we're raising $24,000 to provide 24 kids 
uh, for the opportunity to go to school. So this is kind of a variation of those impact goals, but then you'll use this, um, this that goal language and you'll adapt it to more of a messaging that you'll share with your donors and your audience. Another example is um, to take a stand with us and to donate $24 or $240 today. So being really specific in terms of the dollar amount you want folks to donate, and then showing them that the impact that you'll, they'll create is to provide 24 kids with an opportunity to dream. All right, so first thing you wanna do is have a great story and adapt that to your, your fundraising appeal. The second thing you wanna do is think about how you can increase gift size. So uh, matching gifts uh, when it comes to a campaign typically result in a 51% increase in the average gift size. So it demonstrates huge results. What we've seen on our platform at Cosvox is that folks that have a matching gift as part of the fundraising campaign tend to, to reach their goals as well as exceed it um, because their individual donors um, are really excited to participate in a matching campaign when their donations can be doubled. So in order to secure a matching gift, uh, you can partner with a major donor or you can partner with uh, one of your corporate partners. Um, and it's, it's great because, especially if you're working with a corporate partner, then this allows you to uh, raise the awareness about their brand or their organization, which is a huge thank you, as well as something that a corporate partner would really enjoy as a benefit. You can also look for matching gifts from your board members um, for their annual give gets, for example, uh, a major donor who, who has every year participated in your annual fund, or you can just reposition a gift that you already know that you're going to get and communicate with that donor to see if it can be repurposed as either a micro match, uh, something that happens just within a day, uh, or if it's a large gift, then something that happens for the duration of your year, of your year end campaign. The second technique that you can use to increase gift size is to focus on pledge donations. So we ran a study over here at Cosvox last year uh, where the study found that uh, people who, organizations that offer pledge donations to their donor base, uh, they are more likely to increase their gift size as well as their gift frequency. So what we found is that with pledge donations, 81% of respondents would increase their gift size, which is a huge, huge amount. So instead of just relying on one-time gifts or recurring gifts that just never end, a donors really prefer something that they can say, hey, this is the amount I want to commit to, let's say $1,000, and let me break that up into four payments so that in fact, it, it matches my budget and my cash flow instead of have something that goes on forever. Uh, one of the things that we offer here at Cosvox is this idea around pledge now, pay later, uh, where folks can make a pledge through your donation form um, and then they can pay over time by breaking up into different payment cycles. Uh, the easy thing for organizations is that um, it's easy to implement. You just flip a switch on your donation form on Cosbox, and then it will be something that you can just have automatically. And all the payments will be done automatically. There's no follow-up uh, needed from uh, organization staff. Everything is just done through the system. And then donors can manage their payments, see their payments, get receipts. And you can send this out to not only your donation form, but also your year-end and Giving Tuesday campaigns. So this is something to really look into if you want to increase gift size. Um, the third thing over here when it comes to your Giving Tuesday year campaigns is to think about crafting your communications. So effective communication really includes this idea of a strong story. So we really talked about this in point one, to have a clear goal, have a clear story, so you can use that story to write a compelling fundraising appeal. Um, but you need to take this idea off uh, out to all of your communications. So having a clear impact, having something urgent, having something specific is really important when it comes to communications. Uh, but in addition to that, having a specific timeline that you can organize your team around is important too. So um, one example of a timeline is, um, is kind of a section over here on the right where you know, what you can do is you can start either with a spreadsheet or you can start with um, just even with bullet points and work with the team to figure out, okay, what are the communication touch points? Because what you don't want to have happen is to have too many uh, channels going on and to oversaturate your list or oversaturate your base. You want to use different channels of communication, such as email and social media, tie that into a timeline so that then you can clearly see what is the sequence of communications that we need to work on? What is the narrative that we're really telling and how are we touching on people uh, so that we can get them to convert to make a donation. 
we do have a suggested timeline here uh, for your Giving Tuesday year-end campaign. Uh, it's broken up into the last quarter of the year, so October, November, December. Luckily, today we're in early October, so you can still map out certain things you need to do for October. The biggest things over here is determine your goal, which we talked about, determine your messaging, such as the stories you want to tell, and then map out that timeline. Um, so we have an example timeline here um, that you can look at, but really map out a timeline of how you want to communicate through the rest of the year. Then you can begin developing your fundraising site, your video, and other promotional assets to figure out, okay, what are the messages we want to tell? How do we want to tell them? And how we want to slot them in? Uh, from there, uh, you can send out communications to your supporters. Uh, what I typically recommend is kind of gathering a core group of supporters um, so that you can really test different messages out to see if they resonate with that and getting some honest feedback and running some surveys so you have a better idea of what is really hitting home and what is falling flat. Um, and then you can even ask these folks who are participating, your key supporters, if you're doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraising to recruit them as a peer-to-peer -peer participant, or they can even just be promoters where uh, you pass on a toolkit for year in fundraising or giving to you and they're using their social channels and becoming ambassadors for your organization when it comes to promoting your message. In November, you want to launch your fundraising website, so make sure you have something up and running, a campaign site or a donation page, and really testing it out to make sure once the rush comes that um, it's it works flawlessly. You want to begin rallying your fundraisers and partners together as well, informing them that you're running a big Giving Tuesday campaign or running something for year in fundraising, and then begin to promote heavily one week ahead of July 29th. So put on your calendar, uh, sorry, November 29th. So put on your calendar <laughs> November 22nd as part of uh, your heavy promotions so you can begin rallying your base around that. In December, how you can tie this in is after a Giving Tuesday campaign, you can send out messages to really celebrate the impact of, of what folks have accomplished, showcase that to your supporters, and then tie that into additional fundraising appeals towards the year end to continue uh, reaching your goals. One of the things we see on Cosbox that folks do a lot is to have a Giving Tuesday goal, a Giving Tuesday fundraising website, and then to repurpose it for year end, uh, they'll remove some of the Giving Tuesday logos to update the fundraising appeal, and they'll increase their fundraising thermometer um, by, by their year end fundraising goal in order to just carry that into year end. When it comes to Giving Tuesday specifically, we do have this broken down, especially in the month of November. Uh, November 1st, you want to launch a Giving Tuesday campaign or uh, you're giving to use a fundraising site or a campaign giving page. And then really around um, uh, mid-November is to send out the initial yeah, emails, uh, kind of seeding your community about what you're trying to do. Uh, November 20th, uh, you can send an email of appreciation and thanks to community about what's going to come up next. So it is always helpful to appreciate folks for opening your emails as well as taking action um, and getting them ready. On the 28th, uh, you can send an email uh, that uh, outlines how your community can get involved tomorrow. So really bullet pointing out what are the steps people can take, such as sharing on social media, making a donation, or sending it to one or two friends directly. Um, so you can add that in. On the day of Giving Tuesday, November 29th, you want to send out an email outlining your appeal. Um, and then you can promote throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, uh, you can send a follow-up email if you're uh, to thank folks for making a donation or to do one additional push in the evening. And um, late in the evening, you can send a follow-up email to those who haven't supported the campaign yet, asking them for one last ask as a retargeting campaign. And then the day after, you can send a thank you to your base. So we have this uh, in the slides. You can take a closer look at it. We will be sending the slides out. Um, after our webinar today, so we can take a deeper dive into the specifics here. Um, creating campaign assets is also very important too. So you have your goal, your fundraising appeal, your timeline, for your, all your communications, you have all this uh, planning done. Um, what you can also take a look at is then drafting some of your social posts, your email messages, your fundraising site. A lot of this can be repurposed. So it doesn't mean you have to create a new the content for your fundraising site, the new content for your social media posts, and new content for your emails. 
Uh, what you can do is you can take elements out, repurpose it, abbreviate it, shorten it for social, for example, or you can lengthen it for an email. Um, so it's really creating one message and then taking different angles on that. Another part that folks ask a lot about is their fundraising video. Now, what kind of video they should have, if they should have one. We don't we don't um, see that a video is absolutely necessary. If you have the time to create a fundraising video, then do that. If you don't have the resources or don't have the time, then really focus more on the message and the words on the page. Because a compelling story doesn't really matter how it's delivered. A story would be compelling if it's compelling, and people will read it and click on it and make a donation if it's compelling. So make sure it's compelling first. If you do have the time, focus on the video. Uh, email promotions is one of the most important things. Uh, we believe that email promotion is actually more important than social promotion because email promotions gets more reach from a list that people have um, explicitly opted in from. So we do have a guide and templates on how you can write different emails. You basically just copy and paste a lot of the emails into a, your newsletter system, and then you can send it out. Uh, so take a look here. Uh, we do have a link here. Uh, Jenna will share it in the chat. Uh, so that you so you can just download these free email templates to use. All right, number four, uh, you want to launch your fundraising website. So fundraising website is actually one of the most important things. A lot of folks, when it comes to Giving Tuesday, they do this hard work of creating a great message, finding a story, creating all these assets. And then what they're directing folks to is just a generic uh, donation page that they use throughout the year. The problem with this is that it's not very really measurable. You don't really know based on all this work you're doing, if all that work is leading to some results or if folks are just going to your website and making a donation because it's your end. So one of the things you want to measure is either spinning up a special donation page for all your efforts or using a campaign site that's more compelling that can include a video or images or it can include a strong story and fundraising the monitor to really encourage folks to make a donation. Um, a dedicated page always works better um, because then you can tailor your story instead of having to direct folks to your website where they have to figure out where to donate. Uh, so we recommend having a campaign site, and that's one thing that Cosbox can offer. You can create campaign sites on our platform within an IT person, and it's just out of the box. Um, the other thing that I wanted to encourage folks to look into is this idea around peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So typically peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a way for participants to create personal pages so that they can share this with their friends and family. This will really help you cut through the noise of Giving Tuesday when other folks are just posting on social, other organizations. Having a personal story from someone who supports you throughout the year is a lot more powerful than having a story that comes from a fundraising staff that wrote it. We typically see organizations that use peer-to-peer -peer fundraising on our platform raise twice as much as organizations that just rely on a donation form. So um, looking to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, it'd be a great way to tell your story in a different way, as well as uh, it help increase the amount of donations you get through your Giving Tuesday and your campaign. Um, brands have seen a decrease in 20 to 50% on Facebook, for example. So this is another reason why peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising is really powerful because you're using uh, uh, your supporters' personal um, Facebook uh, actions so they can post it on their social uh, so that their friends and family actually see uh, what's going on. When asked, 85% of donors prefer being asked by friends and family um, uh, versus a direct ask from an organization. Um, so if you've been doing a lot of work in terms of cultivating community or engaging with donors, uh, using peer-to-peer -peer fundraising would be an easy way to um, convert a lot of new donors to your organization for your end. All right. So um, I think that's it for some of the best practices. I think now we can move on to our life critique. So today we went over uh, the importance of giving to you today in your fundraising. We went over some of the checklists of the four things you want to take a look at. Uh, my, my personal uh, view on this is to have a compelling story, something that can really help you create the messages that resonate with the audiences, and then having a great fundraising website and a compelling peer-to-peer -peer page to drive more donations to your year in fundraising. All right, Jenna, let's do the live critique. All right, thanks, Rob. Let me uh, share my screen real quick. Oh, 
Uh, if you start sharing your screen, Rob, I think I could share mine. Let's see, now the interesting thing, I, I was looking through your submissions and um, I think the interesting thing is that maybe some of you, most of you don't actually have a, a dedicated landing page for Giving Tuesday or year end. We actually received a lot of um, general uh, donation landing pages, um, website landing pages. So let me just do a few um, example Giving Tuesday and year end campaigns and Rob, please feel free to jump in with um, your critiques as well. And then we'll do some of the general do website donations as well. Um, so this is my first example that I really love. Um, Fiverr's Children Foundation does a Giving Tuesday campaign on CauseVox every year, and I love how they put the, the Giving Tuesday logo right in their header. Um, they really customize this very nicely. It's very aesthetically appealing and, and captivating and, um, you know, and such with their hex colors and their highlighted donation button. I do like um, that they are really uh, speaking to the specifics, as Rob said. So what specifically does my donation do? What does my $50 do? Um, and so they're very specific in the type of programming that the donation provides. Um, so I chose this, uh, I chose this campaign for the specifics of, of their mission. Um, I think maybe something that could be improved um, if they were looking to optimize for more donations, uh, maybe just like a specific voice coming from uh, their their efforts. You know, somebody who they've impacted specifically. Maybe a testimony, a quote, um, a personal story. As Rob mentioned, personal stories um, are always really impactful. Um, but all in all, I think that you know they really speak to what they're asking the donor, what they're asking of the donor, and so that's um, why I would like to highlight this campaign. I don't know, Rob, if you wanted to add anything, or I can move on to the next. Cool. Uh, so our next Giving Tuesday Year End campaign is from Piedmont Casa, and. Again, they have really nice uh, graphical display here. You know, their, their custom graphics here. Um, I selected this particular Giving Tuesday campaign because of two points. Uh, they did like this hypothetical like storytelling in the beginning that uh, told the story of this young woman who turned 18 and how, you know, she's shielded from the wind and the rain. Um, and this is, this is like a theoretical story of, you know, one of the women that this organization benefits and helps uh, foster children after um, from between 13 and 18. And then uh, they're still uh, continued to work with these individuals up to age 21. So I like the storytelling here. I think it's compelling. Um, and then on top of that, they do have a matching challenge, which they've highlighted on this right hand column, which is uh, really in incentivizing, I think, for donors. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, I think that they did a lot of specifics here and also great storytelling. And on top of all that, uh, their communication, I think overall about their work during and after the pandemic is really um, important too. Uh, they've also used peer-to-peer -peer here. So uh, I just wanted to point out the ease of use here for peer-to-peer -peer and fundraising pages. They did these uh, this custom graphic personal uh, profile image and then defaulted uh, the text here so that all of their personal pages could be drafted with the same language. And then each individual fundraiser can personalize that detail as well as their funding goal. Um, yeah, so I did have this other season of giving um, campaign, just again, briefly highlighting if this is not, you know, giving Tuesday specific, but uh, year end in general. So if you wanted to do something more holiday or year end related, you could also spin up a quick uh, campaign like this on Causevox. This was a virtual event. And so they created a really great uh, video, pre-recorded video and had people participate at a specific time. Um, I think yeah, I think that, uh, again, I would have liked to see a little bit more storytelling and specifics about how uh, a donor's funds would be used, but they did some general information here, uh, how, how much they've been able to uh, assist people monthly. And um, yeah, I think overall, just a really great campaign, uh, as well as using peer-to-peer -peer on top of this to 
allow for uh, their table captains to be virtual table captains and really get people motivated that way. Um, so yeah, I did mention that a lot of you submitted a, a, your general website donation form, which is great. We can definitely go through that here today. I know we did a similar live critique on TechSoup before, so Rob and I are going to um, get to work here. Uh, we have our first critique submission from Fort Ritchie Community Center. Thank you for submitting, by the way, everyone who submitted. Um, so what I really like about this donation landing page is, first of all, your donation form is very visible. So the donate button is very visible. It's highlighted in a different color from the rest of your CTAs at the top. Um, and then when you click on this button, you're, you land here, which is nice. Um, really some standard information about your organization, um, explaining what your donation does when you give it, when a donor donates. And then um, it, the form is found a little bit lower on, on the page, which I think ideally maybe if it was bumped up uh, at the top, more at the top of the page would be a little nicer, just have it right, right away in your donor's um, view. But the donation form is embedded, which is a plus. Really love embedded forms versus linked forms. I think that this is right off the bat, setting you up for success. Um, and then we have some different giving tier options. Uh, these tiers uh, don't have any specific way to define the impact that the specific donation is making. So that's just a suggestion maybe to think about maybe adding some descriptive tiers. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, let's see if I can go through and make, see how the process looks. Okay, some quick um, content inf contact information, which is fine. And then I think once we go through, I'm not sure, you might wanna just double check if your form has mobile wallet options or if it's a, a manual input of credit card, debit card. But I think overall, this is um, a really nice form. I like how it's situated next to uh, all of the ways that people can contact and support your, your organization and also um, some recent activity uh, with these recent new posts. Yeah, yeah, I think this is a great example. Um, I, I like kind of how it's very clean, it's very easy to navigate, and there's a lot of interesting information on it. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about is, um, so I would assume because they have uh, kind of this offline mailer check donation uh, up on the top, then they're being responsive to their donor base. So I would assume that most of their donations probably come in through check donations if they have it on top. Because one of the things you do want to do is you want to prioritize the way that people want to give and then presenting the options um, in that specific order. So if if that's how folks want to do it, um, make a donation, then I think having the address over here is an easy way to do it. One of the things that will add to it if they are expecting a lot of offline donations is to provide some type of uh, PDF form that folks can fill out, for example. Uh, not only can they send a check, but then if they want to complete their donation uh, through an offline format, uh, then they can fill out a form and send it in, and then someone from development or fundraising can help complete that. So that's one thing to consider. Um, I think one of the things that I thought was really interesting here um, is that they do have uh, an embedded form, which is a good press a great best practice. And they have kind of like this little story up top about how they can, um, you're helping kids, local kids. So it, it's kind of like um, a continuing of this first statement on their donate, but I think I would love to see that build out a little bit more about, okay, well, we're helping the community, we're helping kids, but what does that really mean? What is our impact so far? And how as a donor, if I donate $50 or a hundred or a thousand dollars, like how many kids would that help? Like, what would help that help you accomplish? So kind of presenting that story over there and even tying that into some of the tiers of giving so that I know, hey, if I donate $200, it can help one or two kids or with whatever program in my community center. And that could be really interesting. Um, the, the last thing I have here um, that I think is beneficial is that folks do see donations come in through Amazon Smile on the, on the, on the right-hand side over here. But I think it's good to think about, okay, when someone goes to the donate page, what are they really trying to accomplish? Are they trying to um, make sure they can donate their Amazon purchases as a commission to my nonprofit? Or are they really trying to send in a check? Or are they trying to make an online transaction? So thinking about that action and then presenting uh, the options there. So 
Uh, I think Amazon Smile is great, but typically in our uh, on donation pages, we actually don't really see that on there. We see that more in a support area uh, where folks can do Amazon Smile. They can like donate goods. They can like volunteer, for example, as like other ways to support the organization. So uh, what we don't want to do is clutter your donation page. So that's something to think about when it comes to laying out this donation page. Uh, and then very lastly, uh, I think it'd be really great to have something given to you say or um, year in fundraising specific, um, either have a special page for that so you can tailor the language so it can resonate with the messaging that you have on your campaign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, let's move on to Dish Roulette Kitchen. Good food and good people. Um, I like that little slogan. Uh, and so this is, a looks like your website uh, donation landing page. Uh, so I love how, you know, it's kind of just like open and very inclusive language, trying to encourage people to give any amount that they're able to. Um, and then there's a nice donate button, like very visible, um, <clears throat> you, with a brief explanation on, uh, you know, where the donations go. I think, uh, you know, similar to every other example, you know, if, if there can be a little bit more discussion on, you know, what specifically the donation uh, will do for the DRK grant program, um, what, what the monetary assistance to restaurants is practically, I think um, adding those details are always nice. Um, and then if I select the donation button here, let's see where I am, I have lots of windows open on my screen. Um, so we, I see a donation form, um, but it looks like I have to add my email in order to continue to steps two, three, and four to process the donation, which, um, you know, if I don't already have an account, then, um, or if I don't want to add my email for say for, say, I guess I can just see what's, oh, it lets me go through pretty easily. Okay. Um, but it looks like you do have an option for sign in, but this looks great. Your contribution. Um, so the $15, great. It tells us um, what, how, how much hours of labor for each restaurant or for each, for a restaurant, for each tier. I like that a lot. Um, and then let's see what the payment information. Um, we have credit card input. We're pretty standard. Um, yeah, I think the only thing I might change here is just, you know, including some mobile wallets. Um, I think also, I'm not sure if this is more of a linked donation form, um, but if you can actually put the donation form like right on the page here, maybe that's kind of, that would be nice uh, as well. Um, and then again, just adding that additional language around, you know, the kind of impact that you've, maybe the kind of impact you've already made. And um, again, those specifics uh, that you added in the tier descriptions would be nice on a landing page too, I think. Um, I don't know, Rob, if you had any other suggestions. Uh, I think you hit on a lot of them. So I think this is a great start for a donation page. Um, I, I like how it's clear in terms of the, visually, it's the, the green. You see the green against the white. Uh, you don't have to hunt for it. Uh, so I think that's great. Um, but I think your suggestions that you made it would be uh, impactful in driving more donations. I think the only thing that I saw that was a little off was uh, when on, on the donation form, uh, it's a DR, DRK 1K grant, so uh, that might be a little bit confusing to donors if they don't know what that title is, uh, because typically donors will look at, okay, well, uh, what am I donating to? Um, so I think maybe what happened here is that that 1K grant was something specific, or maybe it was a campaign they're running. Um, so uh, if you're doing this same method for year-end fundraising, then I recommend just changing the title so it's a little clearer. Or if you can, you spin up a different donation form or a different donation page to drive donations for um, for those fundraising initiatives so that it doesn't get confusing for donors. Hmm. Great point there. Um, great. Uh, we've got St. John's United next. And I believe this is also a general landing page for donations. Um, I love you know, this top language here. You're giving hope, dignity, and love locally. Um, love that, love the image, love the really bright, vibrant colors for your donate button. Um, 
some more information about the organization is really nice. Uh, some incentives for when you join uh, the society as members. So there's some like membership information, which is nice. And then um, general campaign activity. I think, um, you know, when I come here, I guess I just wasn't exactly sure, you know, if this is connected to a larger campaign or um, if this is a campaign landing page. And then if I donate, let's see. Uh, yeah, so it looks like it's a, another type of like link to donation. This is maybe not your direct website, but um, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I like the form. I mean, I like the, the graphics and um, the title here. Um, I think as always mentioning, um, you know, adding descriptions to tiers can tie more donation, uh, tie the donation to impact and provide a little bit more um, understanding to the donor, like what, what they want to do. It takes away some of the burden of figuring out what donation amount they want to give um, and or just lets them know what kind of change they want to make. Um, We've got specific programs of care, which is great. Uh, I think the other thing here with your frequency is that you could add pledge values, which could, you know, optimize for larger gifts long term, uh, especially if this is an ongoing donation form or campaign. Uh, and then you've got mobile wallets, which is great. Uh, yeah, so I think, um, I think again, uh, as Rob has been mentioning, just adding more specifics on what um, what the donation, what kind of impact the donation is gonna make. Uh, I don't, I guess I don't know specifically what hope, dignity and healing is or like what the, or hope, dignity and love. Um, I don't know what type of people are benefiting from my gift or how. Um, so I think just having more information around what your organization does locally um, and, and who I'd be helping as a donor. Um, yeah. yeah, but overall, well, really nice look. Yeah, a lot of great things about the page um, as well as how it's done, so. Mm -hmm. See, we've got another uh, donation landing page, supercharge your mission, our mission. I like that little catchphrase. Uh, I like a little bit of this description here about what your organization does uh, before you get to the donation tiers. And then similarly, I, I as a donor, I would just love to see more um, impact tied to the donation tier. I see you have some different frequency options. If you want, oh, definitely consider the pledge now pay later option to um, help a donor uh, commit to a specific amount long term instead of something sort of like without an end in mind. Um, and then, of course, um, always be sure to add mobile wallets if you're able to um, so that the donor can use their safe payment method quickly uh, for a faster transaction. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm not sure this uh, if this is exactly connected to a website or if this is just a standalone standalone landing page here, um, but pretty, pretty simple, very straightforward. I mean, I like the, the efficiency of it. Yeah. Um, I think maybe we have time for one more, then we can shift over to questions. Okay, cool. So we've got Voice Buffalo. Um, shout out to upstate New York. I'm from Syracuse. Uh, but yeah, cool. This is great. Um, I love the image here, something you know, thought provoking. And then we have the donate button that's very visible. Uh, so when I click the donate button, what happens? What happens? I get a nice embedded form, not linked, always my favorite. Uh, and then a nice description about your work on the side, uh, dismantling systems of oppression. Um, so this, I mean, by virtue of the nature of your organization, of course, is very compelling. Sorry, I got redirected here. Um, but yeah, the, the donation form is nice. Uh, we have some different recurring options. Always, again, consider pledging and consider a way to add more description around the type of impact that the donor is making, whether it's maybe detailed more on the side or within your tiers here. 
Um, and then what is this? Oh, so just a, an easier way if donors are already signed in. Um, yeah, so I guess it's basic, you know, contact information. And then it looks like you're able to contribute pretty quickly. Um, so I guess the other, the only other thing would be adding mobile wallets for a faster transaction here. Um, yeah, I think we've seen a lot of great examples of, of forms. I think the one thing when it, when we apply, when we think about like Giving Tuesday and year end fundraising is, I think there's a couple of different approaches that people can take. They can either customize their existing donation page so it has more compelling language uh, about whatever message they're trying to tell for the campaign. So that's one way to do it. And then adjusting some of the donation tiers that folks have in order to match the story they're trying to tell. So I think that's one way to do it. I think the other way to do it is to uh, think about, okay, do we have uh, the ability to create like a campaign site or a fundraising site in a landing page, some of, some of the examples that you shared, Jenna, um, as well as from, I think the St. John's has a landing page. Uh, so being able to tell a more compelling story, having something more visual, that's something specific to uh, the campaign being run. Um, it, we typically see more results from the, the latter. So folks who have a tailored campaign site, tailored language. So mm -hmm. if that's something you can do either on your website or using a different tool um, uh, or a campaign site, fundraising site, then you'll see more results. All right, we have a ton of questions. So, uh, and we have limited time. So as always, this is, this, is, this is a hard one. So what kind of questions should we go through, Jenna? The ones on the Q&A, please. Okay, Q&A. So if you do have questions, I know a lot of folks have typed in questions in a chat and there's a lot of people chatting. So uh, if you do have something, uh, a question, then please put it into the Q&A and then we'll try to run through this as fast as possible. All right. So Justin asks that when it comes to securing gifts for major donors for matching, is it best is it uh, a best practice to establish a contract or more of a gentleman's agreement? Okay, so this is interesting because we've been working a lot, or I've been working a lot uh, in my headspace of with major gifts, and basically there's two ways to do it. Some organizations say, hey, we we don't want to do a gift agreement when it comes to major gifts. We just want to have a email confirmation. Uh, just a documented trail of a conversation through email, for example, where they can produce to uh, the donor in, at a later point to keep track of, hey, like you committed, so you should pay. Um, it's really up to you. Typically speaking, if you're trying to get financing for a capital campaign, you want to get some type of signed pledge form or a signed gift agreement with a PDF, e-signature or signature with an amount clearly laid out. Um, if you're doing uh, more of an annual fund or if you're doing something that's not that doesn't require a third party financing like from a bank to build a building, then you can probably get away with more of a gentleman's agreement of something documented through email or a screenshot of text messages or a summary of a phone call. Um, it isn't really the best way to do it. Having something more documented in a paper form like a form is typically best, um, but sometimes organizations don't want to do that because their donors are turned off by that. There's no general rule. Uh, another question I have is from Susan. Um, she's asking, uh, I've seen other webinars suggest that uh, you share the progress to the Giving Tuesday goal. I 100% agree with this uh, because people wanna see how much you're trying to raise, what is your goal, and how much towards your goal are you? Uh, there's this effect where people wanna see that fundraising thermometer because you're 50% there or you're like 5% there and they wanna just make that additional contribution to get to the next milestone. So I agree that when you're running a Giving Tuesday campaign or even a year end, have a progress goal, have a fundraising thermometer. Um, all of our campaign sites on Causebox have a built-in fundraising uh, thermometer. We also do have a free resource. It's called the fundraising thermometer. I think you can search fundraising thermometer with either one or two on Google uh, where you can just input your goal and then there, there'll be a fundraising thermometer that you can just copy and paste into your email or whatever you're using. So definitely use a fundraising goal. Uh, the Bosque Museum, uh, you guys are in Texas, so I like you. I would ask, would you suggest going to matching partners with the ask of a gift or a pledge? Um, yes. 
So uh, 100% uh, using matching gifts as a way for a campaign um, is, especially for folks who can donate a larger amount, um, like your partner, like uh, corporate partners or uh, major donors, is a great way to increase uh, some of the smaller value donors, uh, gift size donors, so that they are incentivized to make a donation because it increases their donation amount. And so definitely go with that. Uh, Kay is asking, um, how do you embed a donation form in your website? So uh, this is a complicated question, Kay. Uh, there are a couple of ways to do it. Uh, typically speaking, you can either embed that form directly on a page on your website, or you can just link to a separate page. Um, whoever's providing your donation form, your donation page, or, or whatever software you're using, whether it's your CRM or something like Cosbox, where we help you create donation pages and forms, uh, you wanna look at uh, the settings of your donation form. And typically there's an option for you to copy and paste a piece of code into your website so that that form just displays on the donate uh, on your website itself. At Cosbox, during the setup period, there is a section related to embeds on us uh, on our platform where you can just copy and paste some code of your form into your website and it'll just display on your uh, organization's webpage. Um, um, follow up question is uh, the the uh, the benefits of an embedded donation uh, form on your site versus a linked form. Uh, typically, we recommend an embedded form if you have the capacity um, and time to embed it because it's easier for donors. When donors go to the donate page on your site then they can see, okay, let me just fill this out and make a donation directly on this page versus them clicking on something and being launched to uh, open a new window or a new tab. And then they have to figure out, okay, now let me fill this out. So typically we do recommend uh, from a donor experience, it's easier for donors just to be on the page, they wanna make a donation and then make a donation. Um, another question we have is, can you expand on what specific tools you give to your fundraising uh, peers for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. All right, so we have a whole resource on this on how you can activate your community for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, uh, one of the resources that I really like is our fundraising toolkit. So after you launch your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign site, or you turn on that setting on your campaign site for your fundraising, um, then you can even you can give uh, your supporters a it's essentially a PDF of, hey, here are some messages you can share. Here's how you set your fundraising goal. This is what we're trying to accomplish. It's essentially a small toolkit that you can hand off to one of your participants so they can get really excited about doing uh, fundraising for you. So they know what to say and how to say it. So I definitely recommend that. And uh, Jenna will paste it in, in the chat for you. Um, mobile wallets. So Jenna mentioned a ton about mobile wallets. With the benefit of a mobile wallet, okay, what is a mobile wallet? A mobile wallet is something like PayPal, Apple Pay, or Google Pay, or Venmo. So those are essentially uh, third-party services that store people's credit cards and debit cards onto their, their device or browser so that they don't have to pull out their wallet, figure out which card to use, enter in 16 digits, plus a C CCV code, and ex expiry. Essentially, it's just saved in your browser or your phone. Uh, like through Apple Pay or Google Pay, so that you can just verify on your phone and then all that stuff is just pre-filled and a donor can make a donation within a few seconds instead of a few minutes. Uh, this is something that we integrate into um, Cosbox, so uh, as, a, as a common thing. So you can look into that, or if you're using uh, your existing donation form, then they may have a feature that does this uh, as well. So looking at that to help donors make a donation. Um, Jason is asking if we're starting a capital campaign, uh, should we have a separate page for that or our regular donate page? So but we've been doing a lot of work on capital campaigns as well. So we'll love to chat about that, Jason. But essentially the best practice when it comes to a capital campaign is uh, to have a separate campaign site where you're telling folks, okay, what, what, what am I trying to build? What is the budget? What's our case for support? What are our naming opportunities that are available, as well as how much are we towards the goal? Um, pledges plus donation fulfillments in a progress bar. 
So that's something that we can support on Cosbox since we're building towards capital campaigns over here. Um, but if you don't have that ability, then yes, you can use your regular donation page. But then uh, if you're able to make a copy of it specifically for your capital campaign, that's a good um, approach where any donations that flow through a capital campaign, uh, through that donation form, go towards your capital campaign so you can have easy reconciliation or uh, easy attribution. Other thing you can do that's a benefit for doing that is then you can set specific donation tier amounts because a capital campaign donor is going to donate a lot more than a small gifts person through Giving Tuesday. Um, how to be successful at peer to peer fundraising? So, uh, peer to peer fundraising, uh, we have a ton of resources on this too, which we'll paste in. Uh, we do have a, a peer to peer fundraising primer that takes you through how you, you can do it. Um, if you're looking for more tangible technical stuff, then uh, feel free to look at one of our demo videos uh, that takes you through a few examples of how to run a peer to peer financing campaign. You can also go to uh, cosbox.com slash blog. And uh, I would say maybe about 30% of our resources on there are about how to run peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, let me see. Um, uh, we have a few other questions on peer-to-peer, -peer, so let me just expand on that for another minute. Uh, with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, it basically allows um, your supporters to create their own personal pages. Um, I don't know if you remember in the really beginning of our presentation, I talked about how it's not about the organization just blasting their message out to their audience. It's really about how you can empower other folks to share your story. So one of the ways to do that is to give um, your supporters, whether they be volunteers, board members, or just people that are, are donors, to be able to create their own personal page. So they can have their photo, their name, as well as a personal story. And they can use that page and share it with their friends. And they'll have their own fundraising goal, fundraising thermometer, and people will be donating to their page, which you get attributed in, uh, to your organization, uh, your organization's campaign. So that's one way of running peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And it's really powerful. Uh, traditionally, you see peer-to-peer -peer fundraising being used for runs, walks, races, uh, virtual events, things like that. Uh, but you can also tie that functionality into a Giving Tuesday campaign or a year-end campaign. Um, see. Oh, more questions. So let me see. We'll take about five more minutes. Okay, great. Um, Suggestions for finding a corporate sponsor or matching gift for Giving Tuesday? Okay. Finding matching gifts. So it's always good to start small. Um, so you can secure, it's, it's better to secure many matching gifts than to, to aim for one giant whale. Uh, so uh, because the, the idea is that uh, uh, individual donors who donate small amounts, they get really excited when there's a matching opportunity. So the more opportunities you have, the more donations you'll get. So it, it isn't always specific about one just big matching donor. Um, so in order to do this, you kind of want to look at um, who really supports your organizations. So you can look at your board. If your board has a give get requirement, uh, figure out the people who haven't fulfilled that, uh, who are kind of missing a, a gap, and ask them, hey, can we repurpose your gap towards a matching gift for Giving Tuesday? So that's one way to do it. Other way to do it, um, instead of looking at your board, you can look at your existing donors. Uh, so whether folks who donate to your annual fund or folks who are just major donors, however way you want to define it. Uh, people define it in different ways. If you're small org, a major donor is someone who donates a thousand bucks. If you're more of a mature organization, a major donor is someone who donates $50,000. So it really just depends on you. Take a look at a, a short list of uh, your typical uh, major donors, whoever they might be, and ask them, hey, uh, would you consider making your donation, your gift this year, uh, a matching gift? So those are two ways that you can go about it that um, most organizations should be able to do. Great. I think um, we have one time for one more question. <clears throat> um, let's see. Um, we have one from Andrew. How do you how do you best get sustaining GNA donations? General and administrative donations. Um, that that one's hard. 
to be honest, because most most small donors just want to donate to programs and not to GNA. Uh, so typically speaking, uh, we we recommend that if you're, you're looking for GNA donations, uh, start up an annual fund, a type of campaign that's run throughout the year, uh, where the donors know that they're donating to uh, general unrestricted. Um, other way to do it is you can build in GNA into some type of program budget. I think a lot of organizations don't do a good enough job of doing this, where uh, they think programs are programs and programs are run themselves without any type of overhead. So when you're doing a costing, when you're doing your budget for any type of project or program or initiative, campaign, whatever it is, you got to build in your GNA you know, overhead. Otherwise, that's not the true cost of funding our program. Um, if you're able to do that when it comes to your costing and budgeting, then when you're raising funds for um, the campaign, a portion of it will go towards running uh, whatever needs to be run. So those are some of the things I recommend. Uh, it looks like we're about time. Uh, we do have, uh, if you do, if you did submit, just in summary, uh, so all of this, the slides will be sent to you by Rita or by TechSoup. So you'll have that. Uh, if you do have any questions on Giving Tuesday, year end fundraising, donation form, I know we didn't get to all these questions. And I always hate this part of webinars where we can't get to a lot of these questions. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can go to our website, causewalks.com, and we'll paste it into the chat or you can contact us, support at causewalks.com. We can arrange a one-on-one -on -one time to chat with you, uh, or you can check out some of the resources that we have. We have a ton of templates, a ton of guides. We spent 14 years developing a lot of great education. So uh, you can go to causewalks.com slash blog. Uh, you can subscribe to our blog. We have a weekly newsletter that goes out with five fundraising resources. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we're pumping out and sending out for the rest of the year revolve around Giving Tuesday, Giving Tuesday planning guides, year-end fundraising, um, major gifts as well as capital campaigns. Um, and my last, oh, my, my last ask is that I'm looking to chat with a lot of folks who either have experience doing major gifts or looking to do a capital campaign since we're developing additional tooling over there. So just for research purposes, uh, if you do want to chat with me, then I'd love to get in contact with you. You can chat with me at rob at causewalks.com. Uh, so thanks so much for everyone's time. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you do have any questions, we'll be more than happy to help. Feel free to reach out.